Hello everyone, my name is Tony Burke with datacenteroverlords.com. I'm a networking instructor and today I'd like to talk to you about a subject that uh, has been bothering me recently. So there's a mistake that I used to make um, for many years and um, I figured out what that mistake was in terms of terminology. Uh, it was a mistake in terminology and when I figure, it's kind of like when you figure out that you made a mistake and you realize what that mistake was, every time you see that mistake getting made, it, it bothers you. So there's been something that's kind of bothering me lately and that's the misuse of a term. Um, and it's a term that that has a, a, a lot of uh, confusion associated with it. So I think I'd like to clear that up. So here's a, here's a scenario. We've got uh, like two layer two switches here. Um, what do we call it when we do this? So it's kind of the universal network sign for that, for that right there. Um, some people have referred to this as LACP. I'm setting up an LACP between two switches. Now, of course, Ethernet has an issue. Ethernet is too stupid to handle a situation where there's more than one way to get anywhere. When we do that, it creates a loop, a bridging loop. Um, so we have things like spanning tree, which, which uh, takes a look at our networking topology, our layer two topology, and uh, prevents any, any redundant path. So in layer two in Ethernet, you can't have more than one way to get anywhere. So one way around that is to form multiple links into a single logical link. So spanning tree treats this link right here as a single path. And people have been using the term LACP to describe this bundling of multiple links. Um, and that's actually incorrect. So the overall technology for what we're talking about here is called link aggregation. So that's when we take multiple links and bundle them together. Um, that's a term, that's a generic term. Um, it's a, an industry standard term coined by the IEEE. Um, and the technology is under the 802.1ax working group, although it used to be 802.3ad, and oftentimes you'll see documentation referred to 802.3ad. But this is link aggregation. This, an individual instance of this is called a lag, link aggregation group. Now, depending on your vendor, the vendor might have a specific term for this. For example, uh, Cisco has long called this uh, ether channel. Um, and then more recently is calling it port channel. They both mean the same thing. So ether channel, port channel, link aggregation, lag. Um, well, link aggregation is the general term. Lag is a specific instance. But they all mean the same thing. It's the same technology. So what does it do and how does it work? Well, it takes multiple links and bundles them into a single logical link, um, allowing us to get the bandwidth benefits of uh, multiple links, uh, link redundancy, and, um, and overall increasing our bandwidth. Um, LACP is an optional part of this. So LACP is the link aggregation control protocol. So what can happen and what LACP is meant to prevent is if I have a couple of switches and I start cabling them up. Now, let's say I make a cabling mistake and over here I have a coffee maker. And for whatever reason, this coffee maker has a 10 gig interface on it. So here's my coffee, little pot there. And I plug my coffee maker into um, that switch. Uh, in, in that switch into that coffee maker instead of the other switch. Now you can do link aggregation without, without LACP. We refer to that oftentimes as a static lag um, um, mode on in the Cisco parlance um, instead of mode active. So what that does is as long as you've got link lights, this switch says, okay, I'm creating a lag. And over here, I've got three link lights, so okay, I've got uh, a, a lag of three links, and this and the switch on the left thinks it's got a lag of four links. So it's going to divide up traffic across those four links and send one, qu roughly one quarter of the traffic. We'll talk about why I say roughly in a minute, and send it to that coffee maker, and that coffee maker is going to get all that traffic, and it's not not going to know what to do with it, and just going to drop it. So we're going to black hole up approximately one quarter of all of our traffic potentially depending on how the traffic gets divided between those links. So what we have is LACP, and in most uh, cases, LACP is recommended. What LACP will do is it will send um, um, 
protocol data units in between the two switches to make sure that everyone's plugged into the right place and will not dynamically add a link um, if it doesn't detect that it's connected to the correct place. So that's LACP. Again, it is an option. Um, some network devices require it. For example, Fabric Interconnects from Cisco. So if you have a Fabric Interconnect, or usually you have a pair, connecting to your upstream switches, they actually require LACP. They will not work without LACP. Um, there are some devices that just don't work with LACP at all. Um, previous versions of VM ESXi, uh, the uh, vSwitch and ESXi, uh, previous versions didn't support LACP, and previous versions, or even older versions, didn't even support link aggregation. They, they had to do um, what's called MAC pinning. Um, but modern versions do support both LACP and, and generic uh, link aggregation. Um, Cisco's ACE load balancer for, is another example of a device. It did not support LACP at all. So you could only set up a static lag um, between uh, an ACE load balancer and, uh, and a network device. Um, let's talk real quick about how the traffic gets divided up between those two devices. So here we go again. We've got four links. And I've put them into a lag. So I'm using link aggregation. So this is switch number one, and this is switch number two. The way the traffic gets divided up, we cannot do round robin in most cases. In fact, it's almost, ne I've never heard of round robin ever being used. Um, I don't even think most switches even have the ability to do round robin. And the reason is, is kind of one of the cardinal rules of networking is that we deliver everything in order. So the if I've got a host and I've got packet number one, packet number two, and packet number three, they're going to arrive on the remote host, no matter how far away, whether we're talking uh, layer two or layer three, um, it arrives as packet number one, packet number two, and packet number three. If it arrives out of order, the host can probably deal with it, but it's going to take a lot of processing power, and generally we want to avoid that. So we want to do in-order delivery. Well, how do we do that across these four links? One of the problems that we can run into is if I send, let's say these uh, three packets are related, maybe they're a TCP connection. If I send link number one across, or packet number one across link number one, packet number two across link number two, and packet number three across link number three, what can happen is, is that either on the egress um, queue or the ingress queue, the egress buffer, the ingress buffer, they can arrive two, then one, then three, depending on how much those buffers are being used. So we can get held up in transit and we do not want to have that happen. So, um, so I'm gonna uh, get rid of these here. So what we need to do is we need to make sure that all traffic of a related nature goes over the same link. So we do not typically get perfect load distribution across a lag. Um, you usually get pretty close depending on the variety of connections and so forth, but we'll, we almost never get perfect distribution. So we need to have some sort of characteristic about these packets. Um, rudimentary switches can use layer two characteristics such as uh, source and destination MAC address. More sophisticated switches can do layer three and layer four. Um, and it actually doesn't matter um, if one switch can only do layer two distinctions and the other switch can do layer two, layer three, layer four. Sometimes we'll even throw a VLAN, VLAN header up there. We'll, we'll call that sometimes a five tuple or seven tuple. Because the way that we divide traffic is independent in each direction. The sending switch, so if I'm sending traffic in that direction, the sending switch is the only switch that has any say in how that tra traffic gets divided. The receiving switch will, re will uh, reconverge all of the traffic um, either way. So we can actually have two different load balancing methods in each direction, um, and that's fine. And, um, I can't think of any case where we need to have symmetric flows like this, um, unless we have like some sort of like load balancer or something in between, but typically that's not an issue with a lag. Uh, so we've got, um, so in, in order, in, in terms of how we divide up the traffic, um, 
there are two basic characteristics. Number characteristic number one is the how how we do um, the load balancing distribution. What are we going to look at? We're going to look at the layer two headers, layer three headers, layer four headers, or are we going to combine them all? And to do that, we typically will do something called a hash. Now, a hash is another term in, in IT that uh, I've used for a long time, and I realized I actually didn't know what it meant. And the actual definition for hash is taking any value, and it's an algorithm by where we take a value of indeterminate size, and we convert it into a value of deterministic size. And the other, um, other aspect, uh, which it's related to, is the bit depth. So are we going to do a 2-bit hash, a 3-bit hash, an 8-bit hash, possibly a 16-bit hash, like some of the Tridents I think are capable of doing, but Trident uh, Broadcom's kind of secretive on that. Um, older switches and less sophisticated switches would do a 3-bit hash. So um, basically, 3 bits worth of values would get distributed between these four links. If, let's say I was doing a four-link um, lag. So something like 0, 0, and 0, 1. Those, I'm sorry, uh, I'm doing a 3-bit hash here. So I'll do a table over here. So link number 1 would get the outcomes of 0, 0, 0, and 0, 0, 1. Link number two would get the outcomes of 0, 1, 0, and 0, 1, 1. Link number three might get the outcomes of um, 1, 0, 0, and 1, 0, 1. And link number four would get the outcomes of 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, 1. So, We've got eight potential values, and we're splitting them across four links. So that gives us pretty even distribution in terms of algorithm, algorithmic distribution. And that's why traditionally when we've done lags, we've done them in powers of two. So two, four, or eight has been our traditional limitation there. Let's say we only did three, or maybe we had link number three. Uh, we lost link number three, so I'm going to simulate a... Maybe we got a backhoe in our data center, something happened. Um, so now we've lost link number four. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to reassign those hash outcomes. So the outcomes of one one zero we'll put on link number one, and one 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 will go on link number two. So as you can see we're sending more traffic to link number one and link number two than we are to link number three. So we're not going to get perfect. Uh, we're not going to get good uh, load distribution across those four links. Now. Um, even if we do have all four links and we've got that, that low distribution going on, if we just have one host talking to another host on a single TCP connection, we're going to use one link in one direction and potentially a different link in the other direction. So all of this requires a good variety of these addresses, whether it be layer two addresses, layer three addresses, layer four addresses, or typically it's a, we'll do a polynomial hash. So what we'll do is we'll take for example, we've got our layer uh, two source MAC address and layer two destination MAC address, layer three source MAC uh, source IP address, layer three destination IP address, layer four source TCP address, layer four destination uh, TCP port number rather. Um, so it's a big long string of numbers, and we're going to run through a hashing algorithm. Um, sometimes it's a really simple algorithm. We just lop off the uh, higher order bits, like we need a three-bit number. So we'll just forget about all those higher order bits, and we'll take the last three digits. So that's 0, 1, 1. In that case, we would match to this one, and we'd go over link number 2 for that direction. Or sometimes it's a more complex, um, similar to a cryptographic hash, where we will take... Um, all these numbers run them through an algorithm, and then it will spit out a value like 101. And that's if that's the case, then um, 101 will go over link number 3. Again, it's independent in each direction. Um, rudimentary switches were limited to typically 3-bit hashes. Newer switches can do 8-bit hashes, which means we have 256 outcomes. Um, if we're going to split 256 outcomes across three links, 
um, we're going to get a lot closer to even distribution. Not perfect, but like 3% difference. I think that Broadcom Trident 2s can do a 16-bit hash, but I'm not quite sure. Maybe a 12-bit hash. If it's a 16-bit hash, that's 65,536 potential outcomes. And if we divide that by three links, that's a, that's a really big number. Again, not, not even distribution, but very, very close to, to, to even. But again, it all depends on whether or not we have a good variety of these addresses. So that's why uh, it's highly desirable to have switches use layer two, layer three, layer four combinations, and, and sometimes even a VLAN header. We'll throw that in there. So a VLAN ID, we'll throw that in there in order to compute the hash, in order to get better, uh, better load distribution. So that is, all of that is link aggregation. Um, real quick about the terminology. Ether channel has sometimes been referred to as proprietary. Um, as far as I can tell, Ether channel has never been proprietary, although it did have a proprietary control pro protocol called PAGP. Um, and that was proprietary, that was Cisco proprietary, that was before there was an LAP standard. Cisco has pretty much abandoned PAGP. I don't know of any modern switching code that supports it. It's all LACP now. But if you, if you did a static Ether channel, um, even on an old switch to another vendor, it would have worked fine. Um, so, uh, an Ether channel has been kind of being kind of phased out. It's still used in the like the catalyst world, um, but uh, port channel is is the tip, typical term we use today. And one more quick term. So, if we have two switches and they're linked together, and we've got a host or maybe uh, another switch, and we're doing something like this. In the Cisco world, we'll call this a VPC or maybe VSS. It's when two switches pretend to be the same switch, either by sharing sharing a forwarding uh, plane with VPC or one forwarding plane completely taking over the other switch, such as VSS. Um, sometimes uh, this is also like stacking. So these are two switches that are stacked in some way. Um, ge generic term for this is MLAG or MCLAG. I think I've heard some vendors refer to it as VLAG. So that, but it, uh, the, the mechanism is the same. We load balance tr um, between these two links going out and then coming in. Again, the load balancing method is independent in each direction. So I hope that clears things up. Um, if you want to check me out on uh, online, I blog at, uh, and you're probably reading this on uh, datacenteroverlords.com. Switch that to a slightly less obnoxious font. Datacenteroverlords.com, and you can find me on Twitter at at T Burke. So, um, if you think I've gotten anything wrong on this, it's quite possible I got a detail wrong here or there. Feel free to let me know, and I'll make a correction. But um, I think I got everything right. Um, so, uh, but feel free to reach, reach out to me on, on Twitter um, or, uh, or through my blog. So I uh, hope you enjoyed this and I hope this uh, cleared things up for you. Thank you.